How about now? Okay, that's too low. One second. Dang it. Okay, audio should be better now. Oh my gosh, this has been like, do you ever get to where you realize you're running really late and then your anxiety gets super high so you make yourself almost nauseated level sick because you're rushing around? That was tonight. Um, I don't know what happened, but everything, well, I know what happened. I forgot that this wasn't set up from last week. So, cause I had moved everything to the office. Anyway, moving on, no one cares. That's just why I'm late. Okay, I'm also kind of out of breath. And then dogs weren't, well, Gibson was cooperating cause Gibson's a good boy, but someone, bad cow was being a bad cow. Okay, let me fix their camera because that is going to drive me crazy. That was the other thing that got messed up. Um, is it this way? You're so lopsided. What do I need to go closer to the door? That way. That's better. I think I'll take it, good enough. Yeah, we're going with good enough on that. Okay, oh my gosh. Huh, double audio. I have no idea why you would be getting double audio. Are you still getting double audio? Because no other audio should be coming through. Like there's nothing. Hmm. Like I only have one mic, so I don't see how you would get double audio. Okay, no one else does. Okay, oh my gosh, seriously. Slow start for tonight. Anyway, um, so I actually am doing something a little bit extra tonight. So we have this peacock that I'm going to be painting and you can see I've already got the background painted. But I was smart this time because I knew this guy would take a little bit of extra work for all the feathers I wanted to do. And I actually pre-recorded how I painted it. But before we get started, I wanna show you what I'm painting on. This is a wood, I actually bought these years ago for acrylic pours and then didn't use enough of them because acrylic pouring is really messy, but I still need to do more videos, but it's on an actual wood block. So this is one you can actually bid on. The link is in the video description if that's working tonight. Um, and it's kind of neat because it's something you can like set on a shelf. It's thick. It's an inch and a half thick. It's four by four inches and just, it's really cool. You can hang it on a wall or I would personally probably set it on a cute shelf between some plants because you know me and my plants, but it's just this cute little box and um, I pre-painted it, but I recorded that. I'm going to show you how I did that and we've got, before we get started for, well, one of those cow, the cow doesn't deserve anything, but it's only fair. We got a super chat. You stay there already from Kirsten. Ah, 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 down. Sorry, I'm gonna sound super mean because he is not listening, like bad not listening. So I can't let him get away with that crap. We'll, we'll get his behavior back under control. I basically have to bark at him a few times. Okay. You want a super chat? Now you can come. You're okay, Wade, come. Wait, you can come, come. He was like, I don't know, you were mean to me, you growled. There you go, good boy, you even was a nice take too, you didn't bite my hand off. Good boy, oh, you're drilling on my foot. Okay, go lay down. See, look at him, look how good he's doing now. He's like, I'm not gonna get in trouble, I'm gonna run right back to the bed. Gibson, lay down, good boys, much nicer cow. Lay down, down. You're not listening again, lay down act like I didn't put a super amazing, crazy amount of time into training them. Anyway, um, I'm going to go ahead and show you now what I started with. And thank you again so much for the super chat. Um, even if the bad cow didn't technically deserve it. I can't be mean enough just to not give him one though. Anyway, um, let's go ahead and I wanna show you what I did for painting this. So the first thing that you wanna do, if you're gonna paint, this is a wood cradle board. If you're gonna paint on something like this, you want to gesso it first because that paint is gonna keep soaking into the wood. So I just put a coat of white gesso. So that's why you're gonna see this is white. But if you look at the background, back, this is actually what it looks like, the whole thing. So um, front of this painted the, that and the sides, painted that white first. And let's see where I put that video. Here we, is this it? Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and thin my paints with some water and I mixed some phthalo blue and black to get my base color. And yeah, I know it's out of focus. The camera always does that. So mixing here and I'm using a larger Taclon bristled filbert. I believe that's my Simply Simmons brush. 
added some water, and now see how that's white? We're just gonna paint over that. Now, this is gonna look a little bit streaky on the first layer, so I'm gonna do two layers of this. And we're just going to fill that in. And these are actually nice because you can kind of stick your fingers on the inside and hold it like this to paint your edges. That is part of why I wanted to paint this separately as a separate video to play back for you guys because I can't really set it on the easel and the dry time and all that. So go ahead and painting that and paint the edges. I'm taking a mop brush and just lightly going over that to soften out some of those brush strokes. And one of the nice things about painting on wood cradle, you're really not gonna get much smoother than that besides maybe painting on glass, like it's super smooth. Pros and cons to that, I personally would say I prefer canvas, either like a Fredericks Blue Label or a Belgian Linen are my favorites, but this it's a def, but definitely a different painting experience to paint on wood like this. Phthalo Blue and Black are the colors that I used here, a mixture of both. So really anything, you can go with purple and black, it just, I wanted it to be very, very dark. And it's really easy to get tiny details on something like this. The drawback for me is it's almost like the paint wants to dry too fast when you paint on wood cradle, where it's like it, just the way that it soaks in, it's so quick. So I dried that completely, second layer. Now this layer needs to be completely wet, completely wet, sorry, at least on the front before, or before I start to lighten up the center. So we get that in there. We're just gonna take some white paint. And this gives me a much more solid, it's not so streaky as it was. I'm wiping the white off the brush, reloading that with some of the dark around the edge. And then again with a mop brush, which is really just a brush, blush brush for me, and I'm gonna soften that out. Just get rid of those brush strokes. I'm not blending, and I often say I'm gonna blend something out, but it's not really blending. What I'm technically doing there is softening out my brush strokes. And so that's how I've got what I have here. And you can see most of the light is actually behind the peacock's head, but a little bit of that light glow is going to show out here, which is the goal. So let me go ahead and remove this just in case that ends up. Yes, okay. So there we go. And now we can go ahead and start on the peacock. Now the next thing I did for the peacock, little piece of tracing paper, I tore this out so it's the same size as my little, my, I want to call it a canvas, my little board. And I just traced this off the computer, make it faster. If you want to freehand it, freehand it on another sheet of paper and then get tracing paper, trace it. And now I can use transfer paper. So I tape it on both corners and I use a piece of transfer paper. You just slide this guy right on under and you take a stylus or you could take an old ballpoint pen, something like that, or a pencil, and you're just gonna trace over your entire subject. Now make sure that that paint is dry before you do that step. It's not gonna, you're not gonna have a happy time if that's not completely dry. And there we go, we are ready to paint our subject. So on to the paints. I want to, in order, now this reference photo, I've got a link to it over at my website. It is a pa on Patreon, but it's free for everybody. You don't have to be a Patreon member to get that photo, the link is open. So you can grab that reference photo. And for that guy, if you look at the blues of a peacock, you're going to be moving from something that's more of a purpley blue or closer to purple in the color wheel to all the way to almost green. Well, some of it is a phthalo green on the chin here, but you've got these greenish blues. You, you're really combining both of those. The other way, the way that we're going to get shimmery feathers is high contrast. If you don't have enough high contrast, that's not going to look shiny. So go ahead and grab that, that reference photo if you don't already have it so you can follow along. And I'm going to go ahead and put some paint out on my palette. And that looks really dark. Let me see if I can brighten up for you guys. There we go. So we've got some phthalo green. You do not need to use the same colors. Let's say you only have one shade of blue then you're just going to go back and forth between adding a little bit of yellow to it or adding a little bit of purple to that one blue so that you get that variation where some of it's closer to purple, some of it's closer to green. So you don't have to have all these different blues and greens that I'm putting out. I'm just putting them up because I have them, may as well. So that one was turquoise blue. Um, let's see, this is ultramarine blue. We definitely need some of that. If I didn't have ultramarine blue though, I would just mix it in with some purple. So again, no big deal. I'm gonna put out a little bit of prism violet and that's what I'm gonna be using where, to mix the color for his beak and a little bit of those feathers in the background. Let's get some raw sienna and that's also what I'm gonna use for his beak and some of that, those cream tones. And let's get some fresh titanium white because I think most of what's on my palette is kind of dry. 
And all of the supplies I'm using are listed in the video description. Oh, you can't even see the palette, sorry. Okay. So let's see, we've got our bird. Now the brushes I'm using, these are actually, I don't know if I have these linked in the video description. It's a cheap set of different Taquan bristled filberts I got off Amazon. I'm not, I don't hate the, the, of all generic, it's actually the only generic paint or uh, painting supply that I like are my, let me move my iced tea, are the paint brushes. I actually really like generic paint brushes. I am in talks with a company about making my own personal brush set. That may happen, we'll see. It'd be nice if we could do that for acrylic so I could be like, here's a full set you could buy. I have no idea what the prices would be. I don't know, but that's coming. But in the meantime, any of these like cheapy brushes, they're, they're honestly fine. I'm gonna start with this eye and that is a brown color. I'm going to, ooh, I don't have my, hold on, I need some red oxide. Let's throw some of that out. So I get brown by mixing black and red oxide. I don't actually buy my brown paint anymore. I used to, like Bandai brown was kind of my go-to. I don't use it often enough that it doesn't kind of get chunky and it takes more effort to thin it out back out with water before it starts to do that. So that's why red oxide doesn't usually do that on me. So I'm just gonna mix a little bit of red oxide. Got some black in there and that is going to give me a brown, which we'll see how well that shows up over the blue. Yeah, good enough. So we'll just fill that in over the eye. And I'm gonna take some white and lighten that up at the bottom. Actually, it'd probably be easier. Let's just start with a lighter color to begin with. Otherwise, I'm gonna be fighting trying to get that light enough. There is too much black on my brush. Let me rinse that off. It is not working for me. Okay, starting again with white. That looks horrible, but it's what we need for right now. I'm gonna do the same thing. Let's get these light colors in. What happens is most of the colors that I want to paint are fairly translucent. And if I paint them right over the blue, they're not gonna show up very well. And especially on an area like this, it's gonna be so light. So we've got some different detailing in the, the nostril, so I'm not gonna try to make that solid. You can hear the dart frogs talking in the background tonight. They are really noisy. And let's see, we've got a light area over here. Just sort of map these guys out so we know where they go. And when you're working on something this small, you can go crazy with the detail, but for the most part, what I do is worry about my general lights and darks. If you can get your values correct, your dark's dark enough, your light's light enough, that's what's gonna make it look realistic. It's not just the detail. And I think we, most of us, as we're getting started with painting, we have a tendency to put too much importance on the detail of things, not, not the value, which is what's really going to matter. Let's go ahead and dry this. We're, oh, there's my hair dryer. Ow, hit my head on the camera. The other thing that I find that's odd working on the wood cr cradle board, it's like it dries faster, but it doesn't dry all the way as fast. It's a very odd working experience when you're, you're used to working on canvases. Okay, let's do that brown again. I've already got it mixed, so I can just pull from that. Needs a bit more water. This is where I always, I'm not used to working on the cradle board, so the, I, I never use enough water. It's not the same as the canvas, that's for sure. Let's get a little shading on his nose in there. And also, he can start mixing the color for the beak. And I'm gonna use some of my prism violet. I've got that red oxide mixed in there. Let's get some white. Gonna, that's really a good color, it's just not light enough. So I'm just gonna mix my white out from the side into that. If I just keep adding white to the whole pot, I'm gonna be wasting a lot of paint. So by mixing it to the side, that gives me a bit more variation as I mix in. Okay. That is a perfect color there for a base. 
And that's the other thing. We, we tend to think, well, if I just knew the right color, mine would look realistic too. It's not the color, it's the values. Dark's dark enough, light's light enough. Yeah, this is the perfect color for the base, but if I leave it like this, I have a flat cartoon. Okay, that's not what we're looking for. Okay, I need to switch to a liner brush. Do I have a, yeah, I mm, think it may work. It's a small round, but I think it'll work okay. I don't really have too much water, so I need to mix some more white and paint in that. Let's go ahead and get these in. So I'm gonna line those. I don't care if I come in too hard, far to where the head is because, or the, this area, because we have to paint over that anyway. Okay. And if you go outside the line a little bit, like I've got a weird sketch mark, just take a bit of water and erase it. As long as you do it before it dries. Okay. So we're gonna leave that. I've got a little bit of detailing around the eye now. And I am just going to dot that in. I'm not gonna line line it. I'm gonna put dots around that so I can start building the look of texture. Take some black and we'll get his pupil in there. Oop, too much water. Just need to dab that off on my paper towel. Let's see, we've got some dark feathers in here. So I'm gonna use this brush and I just wanna start creating the texture of those feathers. It is very important I let some of that blue show through. Let the blue work for you that is on that base layer. I mean, worst case scenario, you cover too much, you have to come back through with more blue, but why, why spend the time on that if we can avoid it? We've got some black that comes around here with the feathers. And I'm, see how I'm just dabbing? And I'm gonna add a little bit more dark here. Let's reload that brush. Get a really thin line right on the upper side of that eye. And it's gonna look weird until we get the shine of the eye in there, but this all has to dry before we can get to that. And this black comes right above the eye right there. Again, let some of that blue show through. I'm really just dabbing. Now, one of the things that I've seen happen when I talk about dabbing paint is people will stab the canvas. We're not stabbing. We're dabbing, and the dab is actually a tiny brush stroke. I mean, it's barely moving, but I am gliding the brush slightly across the canvas. I'm not poking the canvas. That will not, that's coal painting. It's not gonna look good. I mean, it can look cute, but not, not what we're going for here. Let's see, we've got this deeper shadow right around here. Watch the direction of those feathers. Now, I will, the, this camera is not going to give you nearly as much detail as what I'm going to see in person, unfortunately, because it always smooth th smooths things out, but it gives you a pretty good idea. Yeah, the eye does look scary right now. He needs a shot. And that's the trick. The, the, whoop, that doesn't work well. Um, the way that you make an eye look realistic is in having it darker at the top, lighter at the bottom, and that shine. Right now it's upside down. It's darker at the bottom. Let's grab a little bit of raw sienna. Pull that right along the bottom. I'll have to do more when that dries. Actually, let's yeah, get a little bit of white in there too. Okay. 
Now we've got some definite, I want to switch to, if I can find it, my really small rake brush. Now you don't have to use a rake brush for this. If you don't have one, you can use your, really any brush, but use a liner brush and just do a lot of lines. But what a rake brush is, so here's my filbert. This is my rake brush. So one brush stroke gives me a bunch of little lines. This may be too big. I know I have a teeny, teeny, tiny one over here somewhere. Where is it? Is it you? I think it's you. Yeah, this one's a one eight. That's tiny, tiny. This one is ru uh, ruby satin. I think the link for that might be in the video description. It should be, probably not. And I'm going to take black again, and it needs to be thinned with some water. Now the trick to this brush, that paint has to be thinned down with as much water as you would use for a liner brush. If it's not, it's just gonna work like a filbert. Or if it's got too, too much paint and water on it, it'll work like a filbert. But this is gonna give me that really nice sketchy look. Not as obvious on the black because it's not super high contrast yet. And I'm just mapping out where stuff's gonna go, my general lights and darks. And I can come through and do a few more darks once I get some of the lighter blues in too. Got a little bit of darker area. See, I'm using it like a filbert now because I'm pushing harder. Some shading in that nose. Let's use this. I can use the same paint. Mix some more of the violet while I'm at it. This brush is in super good condition, so if I use it sideways, it works like like a thin liner brush just in how I'm holding it. Now the more you paint and draw you'll get to where you can use a single brush and get it to do a lot of stuff. Yeah this is working better than the liner I was using or the round I was using just because the bristles are so healthy. By healthy I mean I didn't forget to wash them. Let's see we got a little detail shading in here. Let's get that in there and that's with the deep violet red oxides mixed in there. There's a little bit of black just kind of a little bit of everything. Again, it's all about getting your lights light enough, your darks dark enough. I don't care if this is the perfect color, it doesn't matter. What matters are those values. Am I too purple? Who cares? Are my darks dark enough, lights light enough? This is one of the biggest hangups that I see slow people down with their art is that they're so worried, and that is overexposed. You can't even see the detail. Let me see if I can fix that. But they're so worried about getting the perfect color. It's not the color, I promise. Okay, let me fix this really quickly. I say really quickly, you never know if it's gonna be quick or not. Um, huh, let's see, what is the best way to fix you? I really hope I didn't just close that window completely. No, I'm good. Okay, let's see if I can, I think it's just too overexposed. Where is my contrast exposure? Oh, that made it worse. That's not good. Kinda? Kinda not? So, <laughs> auto temperature makes it too cool, unfortunately, so that won't work. Um, Kind of close. It's more of a green, but that never is right anyway. Unfortunately, that, I don't know if it's just that it's too close. It's just everything's not as sharp as it should be. I wonder if I, let me see if I back up the camera a little bit, if that's what's causing some of the problems, if it makes any difference. If I back up and zoom in, maybe it will like that better. Or maybe not at all. Uh, yeah, it already looks like I can see it a little bit better. So let's see about zooming in a bit. Yeah, kinda, kinda not. Let's try this for a bit and see how it goes after I get some tea. Okay. So back to these little teeny tiny feathers. I'm gonna go ahead and start, I take it back. I'm gonna keep on putting more of the dark in. And I just want to make sure these, see how I'm getting a little brush stroke. It looks like a bunch of little lines and one brush stroke. I just have to make sure that this goes the direction of the feathers. 
I can always come back and add more if I need to. My, the thing that's most important is that they're going the right direction. Let it curve back over here. And this is going to be very similar if you're painting a hummingbird and you're trying to get those shiny feathers. It's about the contrast. Dark, super dark, light, super light. And then the feathers will smooth out as they get down here. They're not as defined. Oh, I don't have. There we go. Add a little bit more water to my brush and reload that. And I'm going to dab it on my paper towel so that it soaks some of it up. Otherwise, that goes a little crazy. Shadow right on the inside here. Also, after the live stream, we've got one of my favorites, a box opening from Vistaprint. I haven't even seen them myself, so we'll all, I've seen one of them myself because I had to ship them out to you guys this week. So some of you guys should have been getting, started getting, they got shipped yesterday or Monday. So you should start getting them, if not today, tomorrow and the next day, if you're in the U.S. But they're going to be, um, those are the only ones I've seen. So we're going to be opening the Vistaprint box together tonight after I finish this painting. Got a little shadow right in here. Now another method you can go with is just paint the solid black and then paint your highlights over it. That works too. There's so many different ways you can get to the same end. If you ever are painting or drawing and you have one person tell you there's only one way to do something, you know you get, mm, they're in a cult. And there are like art cults out there of my way is the only way. You must not look outside of my methods. You must not. I see this all the time. You must always do this. You must. You hear the word must and you, it's like, hmm, we're going to step back a little bit here because you're kind of creepy. But there's a lot of videos out there and a lot of people teaching. Not even just on videos. Like our uh, college professors are just prone to this crap of my way is the only way. And I don't know why their students are horrible about the whole my art teacher said this, therefore it's definitely true. Wow, weren't you supposed to go to college to like challenge ideas and learn different methods? But yeah, anytime you hear that there's only one method or one way of doing something or you never do this, never do that, you, you gotta ask some questions. I mean, outside of like, don't break the law by violating someone's copyright and that sort of thing. I'm going to let that dry and I want to come back and work on the beak and the skin around here. Well, let's add a little bit of texture. So let's go with some of the color I already mixed. We'll throw a little bit of white in there so it's not too much. Actually, I want to grab some raw sienna as well. Just kind of making a blob, a mess of color. We've got some lines that follow the eye there. We've got some wrinkles. And I don't know that they're showing up that well for you guys. Kinda. So this is the problem apparently with working, oops, working so small. Let me see if I can get a little bit more light if that will help. a little shadow right in here. See, we start building that texture. Pull that into the beak some. A little bit of yellow right on the tip there. We've got, whoops, we're going a little crazy there with that yellow. Let's come through on the ends of these now. And I'm just holding this brush to the side. This is that same rake brush. I can pretty much do the entire painting with this brush at this point. 
tone that down. I want to really tone down the ones in the back. So let's pull, I'm just going to mix. I've got some of the blues and blacks. As just all my colors are mixed together. I just need to darken these up a lot. You want to see that they're there, but not like they shouldn't stand out that much. There we go. Now we have that nice transition from the dark all the way up to the lighter areas. Let's do a bit more work on the beak. I'm going to get some darker areas. Like I'm going to overdo the dark so that I can come back through with the highlights and really make them stand out. Again, creating some texture in there. Okay, now this I want to show you over here because as usual the color is definitely different So we can see a lot more detailing. Let's see back here where there's not glare. There we go You can see there's a already a lot more detailing especially in the beak like there's a lot The little lines that are unfortunately just don't pick up as well. There we go On the other camera Okay so now we're going to, let's leave this for a bit. I'm going to start pulling these brighter feathers in there. So I actually have a really nice aqua that I can use for my highlights. So I'm going to do the base of them with the ultramarine blue. Probably add a little bit of white so it'll show up. Actually, let's do it this way. Let's make things, I'm going to break it down so it's even more simple. I'm just going to use straight white to build up these feathers and then we're going to glaze the blue on them. It's going to allow my blue to be more pure and not a pastel blue, but it will also go a lot faster. So, see what I mean? So many different ways. That's why I keep changing my mind because there are so many different ways to get to the same end. So I'm going to build up all these little cute feathers. I already can see the direction that they go based on the black, and I'm working in between the black. I'm not trying to completely cover those. But if these white areas aren't bright enough, the blue's not gonna show up as much. So get that on there pretty opaque. But I've got little feathers now building up. Make sure if you've got that white line from your uh, tracing and transfer paper, or if you, let's say you drew everything out with a white charcoal pencil, make sure you're covering that right now. We don't want that outline to show as just a line. That would look unfortunate. And when I glaze the blue, I can glaze it over the black too. It's just going to tint it. It's not, it's still going to be black. It's still going to be as dark as you can go. Remember, we're not stabbing the canvas. No violence here. It's a very peaceful little chicken. It really quickly look oops a little too much there how much detail we have so fast and we haven't even glazed yet to make it look good change directions here again you get to where you're just making all the directions go or all the feathers are going the same direction he's just going to look so flat variation in size of the feathers variation in direction and not just make them confetti in every which direction Right now, even though it's going in different directions, it's still going to look a bit flat until we, we glaze over it. That will change everything. The feathers out here are a little bit longer, more fluffed. These ones are going that direction a bit more. I'm 
this is one of the easier ways, I think, to paint feathers, being able to just worry about your, the feather itself, which direction does it go? I don't have to worry about the color yet. We're just gonna glaze all that and it's so easy and it looks so good. As we get out here, they're gonna soften up so we've got longer, more overlapping strokes, which gives you that softer look. Versus here, they're more separated so it looks more, well, separated, more fluffed up. Now, right now, I would say that white's not bright enough that the blue's gonna stand out enough. So I'm gonna come back through and start brightening some of this up a bit more like areas that I really want to stand out. Let's pull some of those out. Because when I go to glaze, it's definitely going to make it darker. So that's why we need to lighten that up. Oops, too much. I had a feeling that brush stroke was going to be too bright. I had way too much paint on it. And then we've got a few of the feathers over here. So I'm starting from the outside and pulling in. And I'm pushing a bit harder on the outer brush stroke and then lightening, I'm lifting the brush so I'm not pushing as hard as I get towards the inside. So pushing harder, lifting up. And this lets that, gives you kind of a dagger stroke where it's thicker at the edge and thin towards the inside. A few little individual scruffs in there. Okay, I can use the same brush. I want to put a few extra highlights just by holding it sideways. Everything with, with acrylic painting especially, but uh, really everything I do, everything is a layering process. There's no just put the right color in the right place. It's just layer until it looks good. Got some highlights in here on that beak. Okay, we're gonna dry this and we can start glazing. If you have any questions, go ahead and ask them now, or you can leave them now and then I'll be answering them at the end. Now you can see this definite line here. I'm gonna be coming back through with black feathers to cover that one, but the rest of those should be covered by now. Okay, so we've got a combination of the, the ultramarine blue, so more of a purpley blue in through here in the outer edge, and then we shift towards just straight phalo green in here, and then the medium in between. We've got this transition there. So that's what I've got to watch as I start layering this. I'm going to give that a second to cool off. It was really hot because it gives me time to pick my brush. This guy should work. And we've got ultramarine and I'm going to thin that with a decent amount of water. I want that to be translucent. No white in a glaze. You put white in a glaze and now you've got a foggy color. We're just gonna tint that color. God, this looks so much better in person. I wish. I've, I really, I'm looking forward to the days that webcams improve enough that you can really see what I'm seeing. That one actually looked really accurate there. Now the ultramarine is a pretty translucent color, so I don't need to thin it with that much water in order for it to really show up well. Now remember when you're painting, if you start feeling nervous, like I'm gonna mess it up, I'm so afraid to mess it up, there's nothing you can do that you can't fix. You just paint over it. There's nothing you're going to ruin. And especially here, you can't even put a hole through it. Okay, let's pull a little bit of the ultramarine blue in here. I'm gonna switch, I'm gonna add some phalo green to that. So I start to move closer to green on the color wheel, but I'm still mixing the two together 
or you can just use phthalo blue if you've got that. I don't know where mine is. I thought I had it out and I do not, so I'm just gonna mix it. So this is perfect. So we now shift to closer to green. It's still blue, but it's closer to green on the color wheel there. And then we're gonna have highlights over some of this. So now I'm gonna go to straight phthalo. So I'm gonna rinse my brush, go straight phthalo green. Same thing, a little bit of water, but it doesn't need too much because that is still a pretty translucent color. Green right in here, right through here. Look at that beautiful transition. We're gonna pull some of the green in here as well, just a little bit. A few spots go on that outer edge. Oh, I'm excited about this guy. I'm not gonna be unhappy if no one bids because he's, this looks good. It looks way better in person as usual, which is probably why I want it because I can see what it looks like. Just a little bit more green in here. Let me show you again what we're looking like so far. So now look at the glazing where we've got the ultramarine blue right on that outer edge and it fades into more of just phthalo green right in there. Now we're going to really make this shimmer by pulling in the highlights and making the darks a little bit darker and we'll be done. Not much more on this guy. Oh, I'm so happy about him. Like I have goosebumps right now because it is so good. Okay. That sounds like I'm more full of myself than I intend to, but whatever. It does look good. Um, I need a bit, I'm gonna use some transparent mixing white. If you don't have transparent mixing white, just add a little bit more white to, or water to your titanium white. I'm gonna use this and a bit of ultramarine blue. And I'm going to glaze, well, it's kind of glaze. I'm gonna put, just wipe this across the shine of the eye. And then look at that already. He looks like he's got this gorgeous glossy eye now. And then we'll take a liner brush. I'm gonna use titanium white. Just take a little dot. Put a little dot on the inside of the eye here so it's a little bit shiny. Dear God, I wish this webcam was as good as my what I'm seeing because you are not getting the full force of the detail here. That is unfortunate. I was hoping it would show better being that it was so small, but I guess not. I'm gonna take my liner brush and do just a little bit of cleaning up here. I'll probably do a little bit more touch up on that. Glaze on the eye in a minute. Definitely gonna make that stand out a bit more. Little line on the beak. It's just these little things. Now notice when I put the line on the beak, I'm not taking this black and going all the way across. Let it fade out into those lighter areas. It gives you a much more natural look. We've got some little marks where the feather, whoops, the little dots where the feathers are sticking out. Not that we can see those little individual guys, but we'll put some dots in there. There's a few here. Okay, let's come through and get some highlights. I can do this with the liner or the rake brush. Let's, let's try first with the rake brush. I'm gonna put a little bit of white in with my aqua green. So this is super light. And I'm gonna hit the tops of some of what's there, just the tips. I don't, I'm not trying to recreate all of these feathers. I want it to be a little bit lighter. Add a touch more white. I'm not trying to recreate them. I'm just hitting like the ends of all of them. And it has to be high contrast here to work. This is part of that. And then when I come back through with some of the black is why it's gonna look so shimmery. Keep checking the direction there where that shifts. We've got this area through here is a little bit brighter. Oh, I forgot to glaze this area. Let me do that. Should have some phthalo green. Completely missed a spot. We'll let that dry a bit before I come back. Oh, 
Oh, I should point out too, because uh, it was last week or the week before was the first time this had ever happened. Um, whoever bid on the yellow flower didn't end up paying. If you ever don't pay, like if you bid on, don't don't bid if you don't know for sure you want it. If you're not sure, just don't bid. Let somebody else bid. If you, that happens, you will be permanently permanently banned from bidding on any of my auctions. Like it's one shot and done. If there's um, the person didn't contact me, nothing. It was just didn't pay. So if that ever happens. Just know, like, it, it's better, just don't bid if you're not sure if you want it. If you could, if it doesn't sell, I may put it up, it'll go for more if I, like this one would definitely list for more than, God, I've only got this for $65. I'm kind of hoping it doesn't sell because it looks so much better in person. I could definitely get more than that. Um, but anyway, point is, if, if you're never, if you're not sure, just don't do it. It wasn't one of my regulars who bid, so whoever did do it though has already been blocked, or blocked from bidding again. Little shines. Oh, you look so good. Seriously, I already know the places in my house he would look well. He's teal. Everywhere would look good. And really little, little highlights in here. These guys are not big. Tiny little brush strokes. A little bit longer right here. This variation is such a big deal to making it look realistic. And that's true with anything in nature, whether it be fur, feathers, trees, and grass. You've got to get that variation. Watch for it. If your work starts looking too uniform, you make a couple of brush strokes, they look great. And then you just start repeating that same brush stroke again, again, and again. Now it just looks unnatural and stiff. You've got to get that variation. little guys in there. The, the more, more of these strokes I do in here, the more excited I'm getting right now. He looks, uh, I, he's, the color saturation just is too overexposed, unfortunately, for you guys there. Let's get a little bit more with the black now. Gonna thin that down with a decent amount of water, and I'm going to come in between some of these feathers and define them, make them look a little bit more fluffed up. Like there's a deeper shadow in between them. And this is really important that I'm not just putting black, more black lines anywhere like I did initially. Now they have to be in between what's there. I'm just defining, deepening those shadows. There's no reason to create more work for myself trying to throw in extra feathers because then I'd have to come right back through with my lights. Not that it's the end of the world, it just wastes a bunch of time. And then now this is where I know I needed that dark area. So we'll come back through with the black and break up that line. Can you tell I have to put my face super close? It's so tiny. Like I have to be so close to my work to the joys of being old. Although I was that blind when I was younger too. They have um, cool things though with light rings and a magnifying glass, so you can really see little details. So if you struggle with seeing your work, but you like to work little, that is definitely an option. They have them on Amazon. I should make a video on those. At this point, I should buy myself one of those. But I've had students that use them and it. They were really, really good. Sometimes if you go to an art supply store, you can find them in, I remember, was it Hobby Lobby or Michaels used to carry them over by the needlework section, like where you could really see your little detail and the lights, it would work for painting too. Some people use them for painting miniatures.
But see now we're starting to really get that shimmery look. I've got to break up the line here. I'm just going to do that with the black. I can still see my line from the um, transfer paper. When that dries, that won't stand out as much. Okay, I'm gonna do a little bit more of a highlight. Again, same thing, transparent mixing white and a little bit of ultramarine blue. Pull that over that little bit there. Actually, I'm gonna leave that how it is and then define the area with the black liner brush again. Now I'm not, I'll sign this tomorrow because this is so little, it's going to need to sit in my lap. Like this is going to be not a fun one to, it's too little. Um, so trying to do it here, I don't want to mess it up. Let me show you, that is it for this guy. Let me show you it. Look how good he looks. Oh my gosh. Seriously, this is one of my favorites I've done in a very long time. So no worries if no one bids, I'm either keeping him or listing him for a lot more on my website than $65 is kind of a joke considering what this is. And then that, and then being on the block like this is just extra cool. So there we go. There is the finished painting. Ah, he's so cute. I'm so excited about him. Now, one of the things that I'm also really excited about, and I'm really, I think it's so cool. God, he looks, this camera does not look good. Like that is, seriously, what in the world? Look at how much better the detail, even though I know it's little here, you can actually see the color and the detailing. So good, but, um, one of the things that's cool is that since, I guess it never crossed my mind before, pre-recording how I do something, I could do an acrylic pour lesson. It's just that the pour would be done, it has to be done three days before the painting that goes over it. So that may be in the future because I can just record that portion of it. So yeah, Dalton Soul said, yeah, that other camera looks horrible. It really does. I mean, this is just, Susan said, explain the bidding to me. If you want to bid on this, the link is in the video description. You have to be a U.S. resident just because honestly, this one I could ship to the U.K. I don't know how to... I don't think it'll let you ship. I, I don't think it'll let you bid if you're not in the US and I can't change that now. But um, yeah, uh, let's see. Let me get a drink and we're gonna need to go through my Vista print order. I have been so thirsty the last few days, I don't know why. Okay, no one cares, Lisa, move on. Let me, okay, I need to move some of these paints out of the way first. Actually, while I do this, We'll get a message from the boys. Without treats, these puppies are so sad. Your Patreon pledge of only $4 or more gives them cookies of happiness. Act now and the bad cow gets a treat too. Oh, and you also get over 300 art lessons and a new one every single week, plus other rewards. Sign up at patreon.com slash lockery. Oh, Gibson. I need to adjust the lighting over there for you guys, huh? Okay. So let's see. I'm not sure what the best camera, maybe this way, will work. Oh, I don't have my scissors. Do I have a razor blade? I guess that could work. I don't see one of those either. And I don't see my scissors. Where did I leave those? Okay, let's just do with, go with a razor blade then. My bad cow. I don't have anything for you. Don't give me sad puppy eyes. Stay. Okay, we'll go with a razor blade and hopefully I won't cut myself. Oh, fly, you guys are in luck. Oh, I need to move this though because I don't want puppy droll on it. Do you boys want a super chat? Fly me to the moon gave you a super chat. Without Oops, treats. That's still going. There we go. Okay, I can't push my buttons. Uh, thank you so much, fly me to the moon. You get, come here, Cal. Look at him, he's, he's worried because he got barked at earlier, seriously. Look how gentle you're taking your treats today. You've been so good about that. Of all your bad cow things, that you've been doing good with. Making him make eye contact with me before he gets his treat. 
he's not chomping my hand like he was. That, I've tried so many things and that seems to be the, the trick. It took a while, to go boys. Okay, go lay down. Say thank you to fly me to the moon and lay down. Lay down, don't stretch. What is this? No stretching, just lay down. Go lay down. Rotten dog. Thank you again. It's so laggy. Uh, I don't know how to do that um, or what to do about that. Refresh, that might help you. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and start opening. So if you are a Patreon member, actually, and if you're considering, if you're not already, the prices are going up at the end of this month, like one of the last days of September, I'll be changing them over. So if you wanna lock in my current rates that are from 2014, do that now, because they're going up at least $2 a month per tier. I've gotta go over the finances and the realistic. Like I just spent, the cost of shipping, the, co the cost of everything is in, well, everyone knows this, you guys know, you were all in the same boat I am. Like everything has gotten, yay inflation. So it's bad. Um, I have to raise for the first time since 2014 my so almost 10 years will be the first time i've raised my my rates so anyway i but if you are a member now or if you're a member before the end of this month then you get to lock in those prices keep in mind once you're a member don't cancel because i know sometimes people will have a problem with their, their credit card gets declined because patreon has been having issues with paypal lately and it's been a whole thing don't decline and then sign up again we need to fix your current account if some, anything goes wrong because I can't put you back on the lower, I mean, it's only a couple of dollars, but if that's like a concern to you, you don't ever cancel the account, account and then I won't be able to get you back at those prices. So anyway, um, let's go ahead and see what we get. So what you get, depending on the tier you're at, you get a post, if you're on the $19, the highest tier, you get a mini print, a postcard and a sticker each month. So this month, this is the one that you guys are getting. It's the Cuttlefish Tuna and Glitch. The glare is kind of terrible. Let me see, oh, that's the wrong. It's not even the right light there. Um, you can kind of see a bit better. Maybe, does it look good over here? Oh no, God, those colors are not right. That's a bit overdone. They're real, they're more soft. This is probably gonna be our more accurate color for everything then. So that is your first mini print. That is what they look like. You can print these, you can, stick them on wherever you want but that just went out so this if you're not already a member you're not getting you missed out on this one this one is for um the ones they went out for they went out just now they should have gone out now in august they're technically for members from july they're always a month late but this time they were two months late because it's me um but anyway so that was the first one that that's the only one i've seen so far everything else is going to be a surprise for both of us let's start with the stickers uh, come on, razor blade. Oh, I think I just cut my fingernail. So we have, oh, these look, oh, they came out cute. We have the glitch sticker. These ones are oval, they're a shiny. Let me see, maybe this one will look okay. Kinda, oh, you know what? Hold on, this is super overexposed at this point, let me. See if I can fix that. Maybe I can fix it now so at least the stickers will look good because obviously the camera is just, we're having troubles. No, I don't think that helped. You can't see the detail. Like it's weird to me how bad the detail is worse than usual tonight. I don't know what I did in settings. Like is it something I've got going on over here? Oh, no, it's not the zoom. Not the focus, because I'm overriding that. I don't know why. It's really annoying. That's probably more accurate color. Yeah, I, I don't know what setting I screwed up. I mean, it's not like that one's ever amazing. Oh, wait, is that making a difference? It is, I think I found it. Contrast was like weirdly high for some reason. So let's darken you a little bit more. Okay, I figured out what I did wrong. I mean, it's not like that camera's ever good, but it was really bad tonight. And now I'm super kicking myself because, yeah. That's pretty, that, that's closer. Man, 
all because contrast was too high. At least I figured it out for the future. Okay, so it's closer on the bird, not perfect. It still looks better in person, but okay, we, we've got it. But anyway, so here's the first sticker and it looks blurry. It is not in person. This is super crisp, like the printing. That's, I'm, I'm gonna sound like, a, like I don't have an affiliate link or anything to do with this print other than that I've been a customer for a very long time. But the print quality, I'm almost always impressed with. Every once in a while I'll get a batch and something about it, it looks terrible. I contact them, they reprint it, problem solved. Like they're, they, really good customer service and i'd say i'd never had a problem with them but i never had a problem with customer service i've had a problem with some of the prints but they always were they fixed it with like no issue so anyway this is one of them and i don't know which month these are going to go out for but this one says pick up your pencil and draw and it has glitch and so there's one of the stickers okay get in there it looks like you when you get these you'll see what i mean like they're super crisp they're super they're really nice this one doesn't say anything, but it's been, it's one that's one of the more popular paintings that I have done. This one is a colored pencil one. It is the Margay, Little Mr. Attitude. And again, it's super crisp in person. It's, everything is just a little bit blurry here, but you can see that guy. And what else do we have? Oh, that looks so good. I get extra happy when I do when I do these because I'm finding out for the first time as you if, if these there's always so much anxiety. This whole order cost me almost thirteen hundred dollars. It was like twelve twelve forty seven or something. I don't know some insane amount of money to get this stuff printed. So you it, there's so much anxiety of did I do it right? Did I misspell something? Did like it's there's always a lot of anxiety involved when I get these. So I'm always happy when I open them and they look amazing. So we've got the, oh, there we go. We've got a B, that one's cute. This one was a colored pencil piece of a B. Again, it's super crisp in person. Like the detail is amazing, but that camera, and it's too far back here, but yay. So the B is coming for you guys. And the last of the stickers, I ordered four months worth of stickers. Now these, the prices I just told you to, the 1200 whatever for these, that's with everything being 30% off. So it would have been a lot more if I did not wait till it was on sale. This one says paint more stuff and it's the little warbler. You remember from earlier this year? Again, it's super crisp in person. Like God, the, the detail on that sticker that you are not able to see unfortunately is I'm impressed with the print quality of these. Like I know a lot of people use sticker mule and I may look into them for some of the like bigger stickers, but I'm telling you the quality of the Vista print ones, I am not, I have nothing bad to say about those. Okay, so we did these. Let me move these out of the way. I don't wanna mess them up. Where can I put you that I don't mess you up? So next is the, um, we've got some postcards. These ones came, uh, let's see, this one is actually from a digital painting. Oh, it looks good. This one is for August, so it'll go August. It should go out in September, wait, July, August. So these ones will be going out later this month or the beginning of next month. So the, uh, this one was a digital painting of a deer. And this is for anyone from the $9, $9.14 or $19 tier gets this one. Let me see. The color's a little off. It's not that orange. It's more of a soft color, but oh. He's cute and really, like the detail looks so soft. So yeah, that, that is one postcard. It looked kind of fall-like to me, so I thought it was fitting. No, you can just stay out. I'm obviously not gonna get you shoved back in there without damaging stuff. Okay, next we've got another, okay, that's more of those postcards, those two stacks of those. The next batch of postcards, oh, I've been, I was curious, like, please don't have printed too dark, because sometimes the dark ones, that's the one thing that I've sometimes had with Vistaprint, things will come out dark, way too dark. Okay, this one, come on. Oh, bent my fingernail backwards and ripped the postcard trying to get it out. It was taped or attached somehow. <laughs> Let's try that again. Why is that so, there we go. Who wants this one? Okay. Ooh. Oh, it printed so good. You won't get this bent one either. It's 
So this is one of my older surreal pieces of a girl holding a violin standing, I don't know if you can, it's not gonna be in focus over there. You know what, let me, ch oh, I don't think I can actually easily change that camera now that I think about it. But again, super crisp detail, like the detail in it, everything is so crisp and so good. That painting I think is still available for sale. I don't think I have sold that. I need to put it on my website, but it's a big one. But oh my gosh, why isn't that hanging in my house? Um, yeah, that printed, oh, it looks terrible there. The detail is so crisp, and it looks better here. I should just shop, stop showing them over there. The detail is so crisp and looks so good. Oh, I love it. Okay, oh, I'm excited already. And that one is for September. So the people who signed up in August, wait. The people who signed up in August get that? I've got to look at my notes. I'm, I'm all off. Okay. Somebody requested this one. It's funny because the original is now apparently still available because I didn't even realize that person didn't pay until last night when I went to pack it. Um, they printed pretty though. So the postcard with the yellow flower. So this one is for October. It was kind of fall like. So, oh, I could have done the pumpkin too. Anyway, so there is October's postcard. That printed really nice. The light color usually, like I'm not, I'm usually less nervous about how the light colored stuff prints than I am dark stuff. But so far that, that one with the girl and the violin, that printed really well. Okay, so these ones, these have printed nicely. Okay, I'm apparently gonna rip this stuff in half. They packed these weirdly tight. That looks good. This one is November's, so it goes out in December. So we've got the uh, fish, the um, same one from the mini prints. It doesn't go out the same month, obviously. This will go in November. So those of you who want that in postcard, that's coming. I wish that these weren't packed so tightly though, because now I've got to be careful when I, re when I put them back in the box. Okay, let's finish with the postcard. Is that it for the postcards? Four, I think. Let me make sure we're done with those. Yeah, I think that's it for the postcards. Okay, so next we have more of the mini prints. Okay, these are too expensive. Don't mess up my pulling them out. Okay, good, it came out easy. Look at this one. I, I've always loved this painting. This one actually sold to someone in Australia years, years ago. So that one, I, yes, that is definitely, I'm excited about this. God, that looks good. Oh, I love that. I need to paint another one like that, like that style I love. Okay. Oh, it's happy night. Everything so far has looked amazing in this order. Next we have, I'm not sure which month this is for. Oh wow, this is another one of the older paintings. The scene inside the scene, there's a goldfish there. You can't really see them that, that easily, but I've got, God, the detail on these is, I'm so impressed with the print job on this. Like that is so accurate to the photo. So yay, okay, that looks good. My excitement level is high if you can't tell. Um, what else do we have? Okay, open that one. I haven't opened you. I opened you. I need to start stacking these back up because I don't want to mess anything up before I... Um, did I open you? I opened you. Ooh, I haven't opened you yet. I'm excited. I want to see that one. Okay. I'm just rearranging a little bit so I can get the last of these out. I don't know why they put some of these different like that. And did I open you? Yeah, we looked at you. Okay, one second, let me pre repack some of this. We went through you. Especially since these had to be completely taken out of their packaging. So now they're wanting to go all over the place. Oh, 
Oh, this is going to be fun to not spill everywhere. Like everything, all these stacks of postcards had to be completely loose because the ties were like really tight this month for some reason, the way they put all this in here. So yeah, that's kind of not going to be fun. Okay, so two more things to share. This is another of the mini prints. Look how good he looks. Oh my gosh. That one, like you can really see the clarity because it's so big, but wow, that printed nice. So we got him and one more mini print. I can't wait to show you. Do you guys remember this tiger? I did, it was from my review of the colored pencil paper, which I hate by the way, the Strathmore's colored pencil paper is crap, don't waste your money. But the print, as bad as the paper was, there we go, it looks so good. All right, and then the last thing I have to show you in the box are the envelopes, if you're on the $19 tier. This all gets shipped in these envelopes. So you will know when your thing, get the, Again, $19 here, the rest of like the postcards just get shipped loose. If you want your postcards in perfect condition, the $19 here is what gives that to you because you get it in an envelope. The rest of it, I mean, it's postcard. It's just the nature of postcards going through the post office. They get stamps and all that all over, but you get a, this is the teal envelope. That looks really undersaturated, but gives you an idea, it has a glitch. So that's what you will look for, that your mini prints, your sticker and your postcard all come in. So yay, that is the whole order. Everything looks good. I cannot wait for you guys to get these. Oh, get in there. Hold on, I'm starting to mess up. I can't shove those in. There we go. Okay, so let's go through, let me move that out of the way. Let's see what questions we have and then we will, what time is it? 917, okay. Um, whoops, that's not the right, there we go. No, that's not right either. Which one is it? That one? No, that one, there we go. Oh, I really hurt my fingernail when I did that. Okay, I'll wait for questions to come. Oh wait, here, nope, they're already coming in. Okay, first we have, uh, Fly Me to the Moon said, please would you remind me how to clean my oil paint brushes? Thank you. So when I clean my oil paint brushes, the first thing that I do is, and I think I have a video. I know I have a video somewhere, anyway. Um, I clean them first in my Mona Lisa Odorless. I've got a little container and I rub my brushes in there, get it as clean as possible, wipe the paint off on a paper towel, Viva paper towel only. A regular like bounty paper towel does not play nicely with, like it doesn't absorb it right. It just makes a hot mess. You may as well use printer paper. Like that's how non-absorbent it is with OMS. So I use my Mona Lisa Odorless Mineral Spirits, clean my brush with that. So I get, wipe the paint off, rinse what letter left is with the Mona Lisa Odorless. Now, if you stop there, those brushes are going to be hard as a rock very, very shortly. So I will wait overnight because I find when they're still really saturated with the OMS, they don't lather well. My next step is lathering them in the masters. I always wanna say the old masters, but I'm pretty sure it's the masters. Joseph corrected me one day. I would have sworn I was right on that and I was not the one who was right on that. But anyway, um, the master's brush cleaner, you just lather it with warm or like cold, cool warm water or whatever and soak it, rinse it brush, it, brush it again, like let it soak because it's a conditioner too, but depending on how bad the brushes are, I want to clean them until that is coming out completely clear. If you've got any tint of color, a little bit of blue, a little bit of purple, whatever colors you're painting with, if that's still coming out in the soap, your brush is not clean yet. So it's kind of a good indication unless you were just using white, then it's obviously not as easy, but that'll give you an idea. Okay. Um. Let's, where are we? Uh, Python said, what are your opinions on junior high, high school art classes? They seem quite restricting on what you can create. In my opinion, I'd love to hear your view. It really depends on your teacher. Um, 
I'll use my two examples. So I didn't get to do junior high art. I can't tell you what that was like for me. And obviously schools are, everything is different now than when I went back when I was a kid, we didn't even have shoes. They hadn't been invented yet. But they, um, so my first art class was when I was a freshman in high school and my teacher was horrible. Like this woman should not have been allowed, my microphone's having issues, don't mind me. Um, that woman should not have been allowed to be around children. Like she was the most discouraging, horrible woman. I at one point wanted to get involved with the LA County Fair, which as it turns out is very easy to, to do as a kid. And I, I went to her, they say, go to your art teacher for help. She told me it was almost impossible to do and not bother. That was her advice. She did not teach me anything. The other students in the class had to teach me. She was just giving me bad grades without telling me why. Other students were like, oh no, let me show you how to shade. Let me show you how to do this. She didn't help with anything. The most nasty, this woman was horrible. Um, Luckily, she's not likely teaching anymore because this was a very long time ago, but she really should have stopped teaching. She never should have been allowed to teach kids, honestly. She was the most discouraging, horrible woman. So that was one example. Now, fast forward, when I was a senior in high school, I'd switched high schools and I just showed them my work. I've been drawing and painting on my own for years. Showed them my work and said, or they put me straight into the, the AP Studio Art class. And it was, here's an assignment, like paint something transparent. You, you can do any subject you want. I did transparent tigers because transparent glasses and still life were the most boring things in the world to me, but he let me. So I could paint my, or I, it was colored pencil. One of my first experiences really working with colored pencil, this was back when Prismacolor was good. That's how old I am. I still have those pencils, but um, I should show them off one day. They're like vintage now. Um, but anyway, they, that was the most amazing class because it was, here's the subject, here's the theme, this is what you're going to do with it. And he, I mean, he wouldn't let you do just anything. I remember I went through once with oil pastels and I did, it was like 20 different silhouettes or 10 different silhouettes of a bunch of stuff. And I remember another kid in the class saw that and he's like, I'm gonna do that. And he starts to do a silhouette, just one silhouette. The teacher comes up and looks at him and he's like, oh heck no, that is not what you're at. No, we're not just doing silhouettes. You're an AP studio art class. The reason I got to do it is because mine was a collage. It was put together, you know, a balance of all that. So it was just kind of fun because he guided you through, he told you why like a straight silhouette was not what this class was about, but why mine were. He just explained everything well. He, he, it wasn't teaching us so much as here's the supplies, here's an assignment, go do it. Because he was actually teaching the beginning art class on the other side, like it was two rooms with a board, uh, thing in the middle, whatever those, uh, divider, that's the word. <laughs> I don't know why that was hard, but a divider in the middle. So you had the AP, there were like uh, 10, 12 of us on the AP studio art class, maybe it wasn't even that much. And then the full class on the other side. Yeah, no, I think there were probably only eight of us. But anyway, point is, that teacher was amazing. His name was Dennis Garcia, I will never forget him. I can't remember the name of the old hag who should not have been allowed chil to, with children. So it depends on your teacher. And really, this is the same with colleges. You will hear me bash colleges nonstop. There are good, good art teachers out there. Good luck finding them. More often than not, with colleges, I find them to be like the old hag. Well, not even like her. It's more of the cult thing I was talking about earlier. My way is the only way. If you do anything outside of my way of thinking, you're dumb, you're wrong, you're you're not progressive in your thinking that you, you don't like everything abstract. So... You get a lot of that um, and a lot of debt to go with it. So yeah, have fun with that. I'm not for, I would not tell the average artist to go on to college if you wanna be an artist. I think that there are way better ways to become, to learn your craft, hone your craft. People who are good at art and went to college would have been good without college. The college isn't what made the difference in most cases. It really only made a difference in their debt level. And they do, oh, you're gonna get connections. They don't matter. Let me tell you how many artists I know who have a degree in art and work at Macy's, like most of them. So the, the teacher you have makes a difference. Do I think those teachers are worth going into debt for in colleges? Absolutely not. I know that's not exactly what you asked for, but you know, we're gonna rant, we're gonna rant. Um, it amazes me how many people, if you're wealthy, your parents have the money and they're paying for everything and you're not gonna come out of school in debt to where you can never buy a house, go for it. Spend, the, spend your mommy and daddy's money if they wanna pay for it. But it's not, like, it's not one of those careers that's gonna pay back that student loan very easily. And it's not necessarily gonna benefit you. So it's like, uh, risk reward, I don't, mm, I have issues with that we get kids in so much debt for professions that are going to have a very hard time ever paying back that debt. Like we are just setting these kids up with bad advice to fail. So anyway, I mean, there are things you should go, you can go to college for and you should, I mean, 
if you're, you didn't go to college to be a doctor, I definitely don't want you to be my doctor. So there are things, obviously, college we need for. There's just certain things like art. The teachers, it, it's very similar. There, you know how many, we'll go this way. You know how many times I have taught somebody in person and heard from them, like I can't, I literally cannot count. And literally in the actual word, literally not Valley Girl overuse of the word. I can't tell you how many times, cause it's been, it's so high that I've heard from people. They went to art for four years, took college in art for four years and did not learn in those four years what they did for me in a couple of months for a lot less. So yeah, there's just, I don't, uh, I mean, if you're in, in high, junior high and high school, you're not paying, I mean, well, taxpayers are paying for it, but like, it doesn't cost you to take those classes. Take them, be exposed. You might be lucky and get a Dennis Garcia as your teacher like I did, or you might get the old hag I did. Don't let the old hag discourage you. That's the only real problem. And the same thing, you get those old hags teaching it and you're going into debt to have an old hag in some of these college classes. So watch for that. But yeah, that is my attitude on that. Um, it depends on the teacher. Take them if it's available to you, but also don't fall into the cult of this, the way this teacher is teaching and what this teacher says, that's the only way. They're always right. Because trust me, most, most of the teachers teaching art in high school or junior high are terrible artists themselves with very few exceptions. Like seriously, whoever is teaching you, make sure that they're good and that they paint in a style you're interested in and that you respect. If there's one of these people who are like, look, my feet are all shaped like triangles because I don't know how to draw toes. I wouldn't, I wouldn't take advice from that person. So things to keep in mind. Okay. I need tea after that little rant. Um, let's see. Susan said, just stumbled upon your live. Happy to have found you. Welcome, Susan. I'm glad you're here. Python said, how do I sketch accurately on a big canvas? You've got a few methods. You, I mean, obviously you're just draw, drawing bigger. So let's say I wanted to freehand it. I am going, well, see, I don't draw directly on a canvas. So that's one thing. I would get a piece of paper and cut that piece of paper out to the size of the canvas. And I draw on that. Then I use tracing paper, trace that, use transfer paper. Now I've got clean lines for my canvas. So first off, I don't ever draw straight on the, I shouldn't say ever. There are times I do. With oil painting, I might. Um, so I guess it depends on the medium. But even then, I'm using a projector or tracing and transfer paper because I don't want eraser marks all over the place. You make a hot mess if you draw dra directly on the canvas, and that why, why make more work? Why make things harder for yourself than they're already going to be? So draw it on another piece of paper, tracing and transfer paper to transfer it over, or use a projector. You had asked, I believe, wasn't it you who asked about? Oh, I don't remember if it was you who asked about the junior high and high school. Because if that's the case, you're probably, projector's probably out of budget, so you may, tracing transfer paper works. But um, to draw large, map it out. You can do, I've done a loose grid method to kind of, you know, you will maybe break it up into the, the roll of thirds and kind of go by that to sketch things out. But I will map out when it's hard to get the perspective, like let's say I'm drawing flowers and a, flowers and a tiger head. I'm gonna make a big circle where I want that tiger head to go, big circles where I want those flowers to go, and then I go within that, once I get my perspective there where I want it, and break it down into smaller areas, and go ahead and freehand that in. I don't just start drawing an ear and working my way out, or start with the eye and work my way out. It is never going to come out the right perspective if you do that, ever. I don't care how good of an artist you are, it won't be, you, you lose control of the, of like the proportions, the perspective, not perspective, the proportions, that's the word I'm looking for. Um, you lose control of that when you just start with like one little area. Draw a big circle and then draw your subjects within those circles so that they're mapped out in, a, in appropriate sizes. So whether it's big or small, I recommend doing that. I know when I was younger, I would start with like, here's the horse's head. And it was, by the time I got to the body, the butt was hanging off the paper because I didn't map out like kind of box in where you want your subject to go. So there's my tip for that. Okay, next. Vanessa said, I'd like to know what you set your airbrush pressure at. That was another great lesson. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I have no idea. I can't see it. It's under my easel. I go by the sound and feel. I know that is not helpful, but if it is spraying so much that the paint's like splattering and running, you get the little beads running around, it's too high. If you don't have enough paint coming out, turn it up. That 
I, that isn't helpful at all. And it depends on the needle, it depends on the thickness of the paint, because like Createx is super thick, I typically would need a little bit more pressure. I don't use Createx much anymore, but it depends on a few different things. So I kind of go by the sound and the feel. And that's just, honestly, I just reach down and turn it up or down if one of those two problems is, help, is happening. So where it gets like, you know, and, and I'm sure if you've airbrushed, you know that, you go to spray it and it like gets a dot, but those bleeding out lines, it's too high, turn it down. <laughs> if, if nothing's coming out, turn it up. That isn't helpful, but that is what I do. Um, I just hit the wrong button. I scrolled way up. Um, what in the world? Okay. Beth said, I wanted to say thank you for all your videos. I appreciate how you take the time to answer questions on live. I watched your lives. I watched uh, lives that only answer questions if you send money. Thank you. And yeah, there are a lot that do that. I understand when you've got, you know, 200,000 people watching, then it makes sense because you can't answer everybody and that's a way to filter like who, who really wants their question. But I've also seen like there, okay, so there is this podcast for reef keepers and they had hardly any, like 500 subscribers. So I don't want to say hardly any, they had a few, but this is not when you start putting everything behind a paywall. They wouldn't answer a question in comments. They wouldn't answer a question on the forums. They would not answer a question if you weren't a paid member. You're not, you, you didn't, you didn't put in the work to build a following to be able to demand that. Like, why would anyone, what, what really? So when they would do their Q&As, they're like, okay, we have a question from Draw Man again. And another question from Draw Man. Another, because he's your only subscriber. So you will only answer questions from one person. Like, it is ridiculous with some, like, those are obviously two extremes. Um, but yeah, it's, it's kind of funny what some people think will work. Obviously, if you can't tell, I don't respect that live stream, so there's that, or those people who run it, or at least one of the people who run it. Moving on. Um, let's see. Lily said, can we see the dragon tank? Not really. So <laughs> it's on the floor back there, and I don't think, like, uh, it would be a lot for me to, yeah, I don't think I can move that. I will post in Discord didn't I post in Discord? I think I posted in Discord, so I don't think it's changed. I take it back. I have one update. It kind of looks the same as last time. I'll post in Discord tonight for you guys. Um, so, I mean, I'll make the big reveal for everyone. So, if you're not a, a member, don't worry. You, I'll be, I'll show, I'll be showing that off to everybody when Dragon gets his big tank. But um, yeah, it's tomorrow is my next schedule. Technically, I could have done it today, but there was definitely not time. But um, tomorrow, I'll be putting another coat of of grout over everything. It takes two hours for each layer of grout, and then I have to let it dry for three days. We are going to a reptile show. If you are in Dallas and you like reptiles, there is a huge reptile show in Arlington this weekend. Just look up Arlington and reptile show for this week, with this week instead. It's like an national something reptile breeders associate. I don't know, whatever. It's a big one. So I'm, we're definitely going. I've got some friends going. I'm going to go um, get, I'm hoping to get all the leaf litter, all like the little sticks and stuff that I need to finish that tank to like really give it a natural feel feel like I want this to have a lot of enrichment for him to feel very natural so I need to get plants glitch needs a new plant for her tank um, so yeah we've got I, I'm excited about this weekend I might get a tarantula we'll see I'm, I'm debating but anyway um Lily said I'm not very techie I would like to buy the owl with wings open on fine art America and use the code but I'm not figuring okay so the code Ah, oh, Delvin Soul reminded me and I didn't do it. So if you are on Patreon, if you are, what tier is it? Is it? I remember if it's the 14 or 19. One of the tiers, you get a code that gives you my cost on my prints on Fine Art America. I need to update it because I should enjoy, why didn't I listen to Dolphin Soul and get it done last week? I forgot. She gives me a list of things I've forgotten to do. And if it wasn't for her, I probably, oh my God, the things I would forget. So anyway, actually all of you guys who remind me stuff of stuff, like Nick tonight lets me know that the link was wrong for the bidding, like ever. You guys help so much, you don't even know. Like every time you message me that you for, I forgot something and then apologize for bugging me about it, I'm like, what are you talking about? You are helping me. But anyway, um, let me, tonight or tomorrow, I will get you a new code. I'll post it for, you know, for that tier so you can click that, use that code to get your discount. Um, but I gotta give you the discount first for this month. Or next, Brittany said, what paper do you recommend for colored pencil artwork? So it depends on how you wanna work. My favorite paper is either gonna be Arches Hot Press Watercolor Paper, Canson Mitens, Lux Archival. Um, pastel Mud I like too, but I need to test Pastel Mud with the archival on the front and the back on that one, because somebody asked me about that and I'm not sure, but working on that was a nice paper. Um, but yeah, my Lux Archival Sanded, 
if I'm going to use Pam Pastels or Powder Blender. Um, can send me tens if I want a colored paper and I kind of want something to be a little bit faster and not put as much tiny, tiny detail in. Like it's just, it's a little bit more of a rough look slightly. And then my Arches Hot Press Watercolor is if I want to either airbrush a background, watercolor a background, or if I want to do everything colored pencil back and front in tons of tiny, tiny, tiny detail, Arches Hot Press is my, my, my go-to paper. Um... Noctis Gamma, Gamma said, how long do your brushes last? Mine only last a handful of small paintings and start to flare out. Paint is collected at the base. I work in oils and use synthetic brushes, smooth surfaces. Yeah, oils, I don't, I don't spend a lot on brushes because I find, what's happening is you and I do not clean our brushes well. That is, that is really what, what is going on. But the other thing is, try when you go with a, an oil painting brush, let me see if I've got an example here. Um, you will work... Let's use these two as an example. Okay, look how long this is. I can keep the paint mostly up here and try to keep it away from here. When the paint gets here, that's what makes the bristles start doing this. And no matter how well you clean it, that's not gonna go so well. Then you have the short ones. There's no, you can't just paint up here. It is going to get all in there no matter what. The shorter bristle brushes, are, especially with oils, are not gonna last as long. You want something that's a bit longer for sure in order to um, get your brushes lasting longer. But also, we're not, we're not, we're letting, you and I are both doing this, so it, you are not alone. We are letting our brushes, we're getting too much paint up here, we're being sloppy about it, trust me, I know, because I do it too, and then, we don't clean it well enough afterwards. Like I need to really take the time and scrub that. The jar that I have has like a wire rack inside of it. You can scrub your paint in with the OMS. Scrub that as good as possible. And then if you are not doing the final stage of, and I do it again, I wait overnight so that it lathers better. But if you're not doing that final stage of a brush cleaner, so you could use pink soap, you could use, I like the master's um, brush cleaner. It's like a big, I get the big tub and it's like a big hard soap and you just get your brush wet and then lather it in that tub. If you are not doing that, if you're only using OMS, yeah, you're gonna ruin all your brushes. I don't, even if you're not getting it up here, your brushes are not gonna last very long in simply OMS. Get, um, get, and then you also have this one, oh, not this one. You will also have, can you see this one, how frayed that is? This isn't an issue of not being cleaned well enough. This is an issue of, I've been using this brush for a very long time, and when I brush, I'm pushing hard and I'm scrubbing. I'm they, no matter what, that's gonna get damaged. So the, the technique could certainly do it, but, the main reason when you said you're getting it down here, yeah, where try to keep the paint on the upper section, get the longer bristled brushes, keep it up here as much as possible. And with acrylics, I don't find it to be as big of a deal. It is a much, much bigger deal with oil paints. Like it is so hard to get that paint out from this area. Like it just, yeah. Okay. Um, PC Back Art said, how can you become a gallery manager without college? Why would you want to become a gallery manager? Is my question. Open your own gallery. Why don't you become a business owner instead? What uh, gallery manager? How many galleries are there that are making enough money that would pay you well enough to pay back your college loans? Is it worth it? I don't know. Maybe if you did uh, a um, community college, which more people should be doing, um, but that doesn't make sense. How much does a gallery manager make? Like you're working, you may as well work at Macy's as a manager. Like that, that doesn't totally make sense. And you can work at Macy's as a manager without a degree. So why go into debt for something that is not going to pay it back? This is what people are missing out on. They're like, if I wanna do this thing, I have to go to college for it. Does that thing pay enough money to pay back those college loans because college is out of control right now. If it was back in the 60s, I'd be like, heck yeah, you can work your way through college. You can go to college and then not be paid that much. It'd be fine. You know, you'll be fine. It doesn't make sense anymore. Colleges are insane and we're giving unsecured loans to people for things they can never pay back. That's it. That, why are we setting kids up to fail? The attitude of, but I wanna be a gallery, and I'm not making fun of you, I'm just using this as an example, and I understand why you feel this way because it's what you've been taught. This is what we're teaching kids all through, even me, as old as I am, all through school. What, what are you gonna do when you go to college? What are you gonna to go to college for? I'm not going to freaking college. What I want to do doesn't need college. I don't need to, I, this sounds bad, but I make more money than most artists I know who went to college, and I don't have the debt. What? Pick one. 
I, I mean, it just does not make sense. What we're, we are raising kids on this attitude of, you just have to go to college. What, you wanna go to college for underwater basket weaving? Sure, go into debt for that. Here, here's your unsecured loan. Have fun paying that back. It is ridiculous what we are telling kids and what we are teaching them. You wanna be a lawyer, you wanna be a doctor, you wanna be an engineer, go to college. Those jobs pay enough to pay back those ridiculous college fees. You can do it then. You wanna be a dentist, you wanna be a veterinarian. There are things that, yes, go to college trade schools. That is what I would recommend people doing. You can get certified. You can take online classes for not that much money through Google. Get certified in IT and make so much more than somebody with an art degree from college that's insanely in debt. And you may say, but I don't want to get into IT. Okay, that's fine, but you didn't need to go to school to be an artist either. Why are we having kids? We are setting kids up to fail, to financially fail. Like we look at, there's just so many problems. There's so many aspects to this. It's not as simple as college is what's causing so many financial problems for kids. The housing market is insane. Like everything is insane right now. But we're telling kids, oh, the only way to make it is to go to college. You know where that started? Let's go back a ways. So the kids, let's say back in the early 1900s, anyone who went to college, those kids always ended up making so much more than their peers so much more, but it wasn't because they went to college. It was because they had the drive. They had a certain drive, that entrepreneurship. This was the type of person who was going to college or they were already set with parents, but it also didn't cost what it costs now. Right now we're telling every single kid, everyone, oh, you just go to college. Well, what if their chosen job occupation is not going to pay that college back? That is stupid. And when everybody is going to college, that degree makes that much, it's that much less. The attitude of you're going to, you have the potential to make more, but not everyone going to college is going to make more enough to make, have made that worth it. It would have been better off for you to get into retail, into management and retail, which you don't need a degree for. So, you know, you can work your way up on a lot of this. The, what It just amazes me watching what we have set kids up to fail for. You want to be a manager of a gallery? You know what? Why don't you work better? Instead, start your own gallery. There are not that many galleries out there where a manager is going to make enough to pay your school loans. There are a handful if you can get into the really rich, rich ones, but most of those, the people working there got those jobs because they knew the people, not because of college, but they knew other rich people and they got in from that. Like, Maybe they had a degree, maybe they didn't. It isn't generally absolutely, it depends on the gallery. It absolutely depends on the gallery. But it, there aren't that many galleries selling that high end of art to pay enough to pay your college loans. Like it's, there are a few. So don't come at me going, oh no, look at this one. Yeah, there's a handful. They already have employees, they don't need you. Like you're gonna, the chances of you getting that job are not likely. That's another thing, a lot of people do the whole, well, if I go to college, then I can teach art. I can go, I'm gonna be a college professor and teach art. There are not, I forget what the numbers were. I went through this once and figured it out. Let's say, I'm making numbers up by the way, don't quote me because these, these are not correct. Let's say there's 200 colleges with decent artists or you know, art programs. You've got what, maybe three professors of art in each college. I don't know these numbers. I'm pulling this out of my rear. Let's say you've got 300 colleges, three. There's not that many, many professor position, positions open considering almost everyone who goes to college that I've met, like students, they're like, well, I'll just be a professor in college. You're not gonna get the job. Those people don't give up those jobs. <laughs> like that is very, um, can it happen? Don't, you know, work for your dreams. You're just as likely to be a rock star. I mean, work for your dreams, I guess. Go for what you want, but be realistic. Was it worth going into debt? Was that really what you wanted to do? Or if you're using that as your backup plan, because that's what it was. It, um, the students that I've talked to that were like, I'm gonna go to school and I'm gonna, I'm gonna, that'll be my backup plan. That's not a good backup plan. Your backup plan is working at Kroger's at this point because the, your backup plan to be a college professor, yeah, that's not, that, that's not a backup plan because the chances, even if that's your main goal, your main rock star dream, the chances of getting that are very difficult. Can it happen? Sure. It, it, at a good college, the, the better the college, the less likely it is for you to get that position, obviously, which, you know, again, you're not getting paid as much. Is it gonna pay back your student loans? Like we, we're not thinking of the big picture. We, we have been taught just simply go to college. You graduate high school, you jump into college. That's stupid, I'm sorry, it is stupid. Unless you're going for a position that, that has the potential to pay back that college loan. Like why are we doing this to kids? It is so frustrating to see how badly we have screwed kids from the time I, I mean, back in the 90s, that's what I was, would you want to go to college? And when my, college from my age was not anywhere near what you guys now are having to deal with. Like, you are being ripped off so badly and lied to. It's a, oh, I'm a swore. It's a crappy, uh, like it's a scam almost of getting you in debt 
so that they can make money. They don't care what you go in there for. They're not going to give you good advice. Yeah, no, maybe maybe art isn't the thing if you're having to go this far into debt. You're not going to be able to pay this low. But they don't care. It's unsecured. They're getting their money. The government's going to pay it. They don't care. The, it, such bad advice is given to kids. Tech schools. Tech schools are so much better if you're looking for that sort of thing. But anyway, that is my rant because it is so frustrating to see how badly we have effed up kids, their, their futures, because we insisted, you're going to go to college. Well, don't you want to be a manager of an art gallery? Why do you want to be a manager of an art gallery? Why? I don't know why that would be a dream over being a manager at Macy's. One of these things you don't need to get a, a thing for, but the pay, the pay is going to be the same. Like, it's, it's bizarre. It is bizarre what we have done to kids. Anyway. Thank you, by the way. I know I sound like I'm ranting at you. It's not at you. It's at the system and what it's doing to kids these days. Like what it is doing, putting them into debt, starting their lives out. They're too young to understand what that debt is going to mean in the future. Their inability to buy a house, their inability to make choices in their lives that could make them make their life better because they're like, no, I'm, I'm broke. I, I've got to pay this bill. I've got to pay this debt back that is not oh, it's so frustrating. But anyway, it, thank you for the question because I think that was great and you know. There we go for my rant. Hat Trick Farm said, Hi, Lisa, I wanted to bid on this painting tonight, but I'm locked out of my account again. Make a new account or refresh, log out and log back in. I don't have another answer on that. I don't, when it says locked out, I don't know what that means. I'm sorry. Um, do you have more information on that? Uh, Python said, were you a child art prodigy? I definitely wasn't in grade six. I just kind of stopped trying in elementary art class. I started drawing, tried oils. Perfect practice makes progress. Um, I was not a prodigy at all. Like third grade, I was drawing horses and a rainbow all the time and a little waterfall. My horses look like hot dogs on sticks. Like their body was a little sausage on sticks. It was no better than my friends. Although I remember my friends like telling me what a good job I did because they were really nice. But it was, you know, it was not. It was hilarious. I was no child art prodigy. I started getting, I mean, I was always sick as a kid, but that was getting worse and worse as a teenager and then I'm dealing with depression and all of that. So art was what I did. That is what, you know, other kids are playing softball and sports. I was all sickly and depressed. I drew. And you draw enough, you're going to get better. So, and that, and I really wanted, so I grew up poor. And I wanted, and that is not a poor me, oh my God. Um, I'm actually grateful for how I grew up because let me tell you, it makes you appreciate the fact that I can buy curtains and not a bed sheet stuck on the wall. But um, the, it's the little things. So anyway, my friends all had cool posters of like sharks and tigers on their walls. We were like in elementary school, so that was cool. We thought it was cool. Um, maybe we were just dorks. But I wanted that. I wanted the, I loved animals. I wanted that. I couldn't afford it. And so I started drawing. My mom, the one thing, even though we were broke, my mom always made sure I had art supplies. They weren't like good art supplies, but I had something to draw or color all the time. Uh, I might be drawing on the back of a paper bag from the grocery store, but I had something to draw on. She always had something for me. Um, she would say boxes from work. Old, where she worked it as a receptionist. Old, or back then we called it secretary. But the waste paper, so it always would have the logo, but something went wrong in the print. She would save those for me, the manager let her take them home for me so I could draw on the back. Like these sorts of things. And I got to where I wanted things on my wall, so I started trying harder and harder to make it better and better so I could hang it on my wall and be proud of myself. But that's really where that started is I wanted my own art. And today, even, it's actually a video I'm working on right now, it's still what I do. I can't afford, like Christian Lassen, his paintings go for like $300,000. Well, they did in the, the early 2000s. I don't know now because meth is a one heck of a drug apparently. But I, I don't know that he does anything or sells anything anymore. But that's what they were going for. I, 300, are you kidding me? I'm gonna learn to paint it on my own. I'm gonna learn to do it on my own. And so, yeah, no, I was not a prodigy, but you do something enough and you want something bad. And if you're gonna work for it, anyone can become good at art. Anyone, if you work for it. And you work right. I mean, if you're sticking to lessons for beginners, there are a lot, you know, the paint and sip type lessons, they're fun, do those but you're not going to get better because of them either. So those are not going to get you anywhere. But when you keep challenging yourself, you keep trying things that are harder, you absolutely will get better. Anyone can. Um, definitely no prodigy here. Uh, let's see. Deborah said, I wanted to say love all your videos, very informational and motivating. Glad I found you to help on my artist journey. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, that gave me goosebumps. And uh, Python said, I remember I drew Fat stick men in grade five. I'm Canadian, so drawing the Canadian flag is always a struggle. In grade four, I literally drew a triangle for the maple leaf. I didn't try. Oh my gosh, yeah, our, well, no. If we wanted to go accurately, like when we wanted to do the American flag, we should put dots where the stars go, but trying to draw 
50 stars, that wasn't funny either. Like, none and all are good. The, the straight lines were easy. That's funny, though. Okay, what are we at? Got 10 more minutes. Lily said, I graduated high school in 78. I went to a community college two years in art, 2004 and 2005. Learned mostly things like Photoshop, magazine layout and stuff. And those are, are useful. But the, And that's the thing now. I think that's part of why my attitude about college is so negative. You don't need it. You do not for art. There, there's so much free content. You want to learn how to market your art better? Free videos on, on YouTube that are amazing. Amazing. Um, you want to learn how to paint. There's videos free. You've got paid low cost. I mean, mine, $4 a month for all 300 plus a new one every week. Well, mostly every week. Um, lately, I've been doing some big projects, so they've been taking longer. But you can learn without, you don't need, and you get to pick and choose the teacher. You can look at their art and go, you know what? I want to learn from them because I want to learn that style of art. You're not really doing that at a college. You're learning what they tell you. Here, you get to pick and choose. That teacher, I want to learn from them. Oh, this teacher over here. And it doesn't cost you that much, like what, $4 or it's going to be $6 for me on Patreon. This teacher, even if it's $30 for a lesson. The difference between that and, and college, but you get to, to you choose the style and the teacher that you want, that there are so many better options right now. You can learn to build your own website now. You can learn Photoshop. There are so many free lessons here on YouTube that as much as I complain about YouTube's crappy search function, and I won't, I mean, it is crappy, but still, like, these are free resources we do not need to go to college for. So, again, it depends on what you want to be. You want to be a doctor, you're not going to learn that on YouTube. Go to college. You get to go into debt, but the rest of us don't need to. It, it's, it doesn't make sense. So yeah, that's, we have, I mean, even with me, I graduated in 95. I did not have, there were no lessons. The most you might do is maybe I could, because I didn't have um, cable, at, inter, cable at home, so I couldn't watch like Bob Ross or anything. Um, I could, there were some books. I would go to like discount bookstores or like um, used books and get art books. Um, there were no videos that I could afford them. $30, $60 for a video, for one video, one lesson. I couldn't afford that. That was out of my reach. You guys, like learning now, you have so much at your fingertips. That is awesome. So yeah, that, that's part of my rant too. Uh, let's see. Did we get from, okay, who was it that wanted Hat Trick Farm, wanted to bid on the peacock? Did that, ended up working? I just tried again. It says there's a critical error on this website. You know, that happened last week too. I don't know what is going on. I'm going to have to test these. Crap. Um, is anyone else trying to bid? Is it, well, no one else did. Did anyone? Hold on, I'm gonna go bid on it myself because I need to see what is happening with that. Oh, will it let me bid because I'm on my own? I don't know if it will because I'm logged in. No, it worked. I don't know why it does that for some people. And I don't even know who to contact on that because Yeah, I have no idea what to do to fix that. Um, is anyone else having a hard time bidding? And you're on your desktop. What browser are you using? I'm on Google Chrome. Can you make a new account? Let me go to my dashboard. Um, users. Alexa, set AC to 72. I also apologize to everyone because I should have mute muted myself before that, but it is hot in here. One of the dogs is even breathing heavy. And I don't even think it picked it up. Ugh. Hold on. When the boys start panting, you know it's getting too hot in here. Um... I'm looking at the accounts, or I'm trying to right now. I 
<laughs> well, I mean, it worked for me. I was able to buy once from you. It was a shark painting. I haven't been able to place a bid since. Have, are you under Hat Trick Farm? Let me make sure nothing is. Hold on, let me see. Okay, there's your email. Search users, customer. Role is customer. I don't, I could send you a password reset, I guess. That's really annoying. Um, you know what, if no one has bid by now, let's do this. I'm gonna end the auction and message me after and I'll give it to you for 65. This is too, you are gonna love this. Like when you see what this looks like at $65, like I cannot believe this is selling for, if I sold this on my own, I would probably be 150-ish if I listed it on my site. Like you are going to love this. Um, let me, hold on, let me end this. I'm excited for you though. Like I'm excited because I'm like, dang, you got a deal. Let me um, edit. I don't know why or how to fix that though. Um, how can I edit? Auction started, unlimited. And if everyone's trying to bid too, right now, too late. Um, I'm just gonna throw it in the trash. I think that'll work. So there we go. It is yours for $65. Um, mess, email me. Oh, we had problems with the email, didn't we? Hopefully you'll get the email. Um, we need to sort that out. If not, message me, I don't know. Um, we're going to have to figure out why. I, I mean, I already ended the auction, so no one can bid now. Like, it, it's yours. Because um, at this point, if anyone was going to bid, they're not going to. Um, yeah. Um, let's see. So I apologize for that, but that's the best I can do. Um, at least you got it for 60. But seriously, look at what you're getting. Like, this looks, oh, I can't get closer. It's not in focus. This looks so, I'm so happy with how this came out. Oh, I can't wait for you to see it. Um, okay. Um, how many hours should you draw every day as much as you can? I mean, it's up to you. What, what do you, if that, I don't want to say two hours every day because some people are going to be like, well, I can't do that. I'm out. No, if that, if it looks like 10 minutes for you, then it's 10 minutes for you. If you can manage, the more the better, obviously, with anything that you want to get better at. But whatever it is for you, do that. And the, the, one of the things, and I talked about this in our, in the email newsletter today, um, or that went out today, we have a tendency to forget how important art is for our mental health. And it can be, it can be crocheting, it can be using, doing coloring books, it can be any number of things, but it is so helpful for your personal health, like your mental health. It, it do a Google search on this. The things that the studies they've done on what art helps improve depression, anxiety. For me, I know personally, I'll start getting, uh, and I don't really deal, depression isn't really an issue for me anymore, not like it used to, like when I was young, it was a real, what was it, severe depression I was diagnosed with, my official whatever diagnosis, but I, I think mine was situational because my dad was, anyway. So, um, too much information, Lisa, but it was bad. But art was like, that's what saved me. That's what kept me going. And so I know it, what a difference that that makes. But people suffering from anxiety, people suffering from depression, um, the list, the cancer patients, their pain lessened when they spent more time painting and drawing. And, and I find that because I deal with a lot of pain myself with arthritis in my back. It's arthritis I've had since I was 19. So, well, actually it really started when I was like 16, but 19 is when it started getting that worse. But anyway. That gets so bad in my in my wrist and, and everywhere else where I it is angry. I'm always uncomfortable. I'm always in pain. But when I when you start painting, you just get in the zone and it's like, it's not that the pain's not there, it's that I'm not focused on it. And it makes it much easier to deal with and to tolerate. That I mean, you'll see me get wiggly at the end of a live live stream. My back's actually not too bad today. But um, yeah, you, the longer I go without painting, if I go too many days without painting and drawing, you just really start feeling mad. And I noticed this. I'm a violin. Well, I used to play in a band, um, my, the electric violin. And as much as I love playing, 
I noticed when I spent too much playing by time playing violin, like it, I don't know, there was just something about painting and drawing. If I didn't, I got to where I started bringing my drawings with me to practice because I'd start getting depressed again. I'd start feeling just that down and kind of like meh, not super depressed, but just meh. And when I get back, get a, a painting going, and it's like instantly, I just feel so much better once I get going. Not instantly, but I mean, you know, spend a day drawing and, or painting and getting back to it. It really makes a big, big difference for our mental health. We need to paint and draw more. You don't even have to be good. You get all of the mental benefits of, of art therapy. You don't have to be good. Your first time touching a paintbrush is fine. You can paint with your feet, doesn't matter. It can look terrible, but you get the mental health benefits of painting and drawing. It's something that we just wanna put the time into. So even if that's 10 minutes for you, that's 10 minutes, but the longer you have to spend on it, the better for sure. Now take breaks, your eyes need breaks. You can start getting, if you start running into a thing where you're like, oh, I messed this up, oh, I messed this up. Everything's getting messed up, take a break. Walk away, come back an hour later if you've got time. Um, but yeah, no, it's really, really good for you for so many health reasons like there's just so many benefits you don't need to go to an art therapy class you just need to pick up your paintbrush your pencil and work doodle noodle you can work in a coloring book that helps a lot of people with anxiety coloring books are amazing those of you who have actually i need to do a lesson on this i want to do one showing you how you can um, my coloring pages for the 14 dollars and up tier i want to show you how you can use those print those on watercolor paper and do like watercolor or ink tints over them just for fun making some amazing you know piece of art you're doing something for fun that's just enjoyable without this without any stress with just let's have some fun but it does so much for your mental health like so so much i'm telling you firsthand but yeah so that is um as much time as you have that that's that is it so anyway um for hat trick farm oh good i've got your email the email that my account is on yeah i don't know but i will send you the other one got locked so we did the gmail and that's locked again oh no that may be why i don't know it may be as simple as starting a new um account when it starts doing that i don't know but anyway um we'll get that sorted um i'll email you later i'll, I'll send you a paypal invoice for that so you, oh my gosh i can't wait for you to see this i need to sign it but man does this look good even those of you when i take the photo for you guys to see tomorrow like man does that look good um anyway and he gets to go live with the shark so that is it it is 1001 we are done for the night thank you guys so much for joining and working with me on my bad camera angle and forgetting to do stuff and make sure to check out the moderators their channels are listed in the video description they help me so much i don't know what we're doing next week i need to figure that out I'll have to think of something. And I will post over on Discord a photo of the Bearded Dragon tank. So far, it's not gotten super far, but, oh, kind of it has. But it looks the same as last update. So anyway, I'll see you guys next week. I'm forgetting something and I have no idea what it is. I don't know. It, it's probably important. Usually is. And I don't remember. If you want to learn to paint and draw, but you don't have any experience or your drawing skills aren't that good, join over 1,100 students and follow along with over 300 painting and drawing lessons. There are over 675 hours worth of lessons and new ones every week, just waiting to turn you into a master. The great thing about these classes are that you get to do them from your own home in your own time. If you're taking in-person classes, often it's very hard where you're either falling behind, you're trying to rush to keep up with other students, or you're working faster than the other students waiting for them to catch up to you. With my classes, there is no time limit. You can work at your own pace, whatever feels comfortable for you. Join before October and you will lock in my 2014 prices. That gives you all of these lessons for as little as $4 a month, plus bonus content to help you master your medium.